Welcome back. Today we're going to prep these timbers, uh, add post connectors, and get them put up uh, in preparation for the subfloor. So these are the posts I dressed the other day on the sawmill and got them down to the correct dimension. If I had a larger saw, I'd use it, but this is what I have. Um, I did notice when I was making my initial cut, uh, really trying hard, obviously, to stay on the line um, that I've cut across uh, and marked on all four sides so I can have a good clean cut. Um, but the bottom was drifting, so it looks like the saw is not in square. Uh, so what I did was I made another uh, practice cut um, lower down on the post, uh, and there's a set screw on the on the leveling cage on the portable saw. Uh, and I made the adjustment, and now that uh, saw line is falling clean uh, on my mark, which is important, as I said, because um, I want this to be a nice, clean, flat cut uh, all the way down since it's going to be, um, this is what will connect to the post and base. Uh, I have a Japanese pole saw. It's, it's very good for dry wood. Um, this uh, timber is not fully cured, so there's some moisture in the center of the log. Uh, so it's a little bit harder with Japanese pole saw. It, it tends to gum up and get um, a lot of uh, just wood fibers in the blades, and it's not terribly effective. Um, but uh, once you get uh, the skill saw all the way around it, that there's a fairly small core in there, uh, and it didn't take me long to, to get through it. Um, in my case, I didn't actually want it perfectly flat, uh, the bottom of the post. I, I wanted it just a little bit concave because of the way it's going to sit on the post connector um, that I'll show in a little bit. Uh, so having it just a little concave uh, ensures that you'll have um, a good solid uh, footing uh, for the post and so that it doesn't teeter. Um, so these are the connectors I'm using. It's Connext uh, with an X. Uh, I'll put something in the, in the description. Uh, it's a knife plate. Uh, it's a quarter inch uh, knife plate uh, with, it, it has um, eight holes, but it's uh, six um, with the connector or with the riser. Uh, and this is a one inch uh, composite riser that you can get. Uh, code is that anything that's non-treated be at least an inch off of concrete. And that's what, um, this is what will ensure that that happens. Uh, overall, not too too bad to work with. I like the product um, and uh, certainly probably use it again. I think it's probably better for outdoor um, use, uh, but it certainly suits my needs here. Uh, so now I've, I've already gone uh, through the end of the timber here with a skill saw and, and taken out a lot of uh, the meat, but um, this is a quarter inch slot. Uh, that's eight inches deep, so it's a little hard to get to. Um, I do have a set of chisels that I'll bring out here in a minute, um, thinking that'll help. I also brought out my electric uh, sawzall, which meant I have to fire up the generator, um, but it just chewed through some of that excess wood a little bit uh, more easily. Um, but this really just boils down to me not having the right tool on the job site. Uh, I'm not near my house and um, I didn't have a quarter inch chisel. The smallest chisel I had was a half an inch uh, and I didn't want to make the hole that wide. So um, I just did some rough uh, hollowing out and then came back with the chisels again uh, just to clean it up. And you can see I've got a pretty good fit there uh, for the knife plate. Here, uh, the knife plate swoops down uh, into the horizontal, so there's just, it's a little bit fatter than a quarter inch. So what I'm doing is just chamfering off uh, the corners uh, on both those inside corners that'll sit uh, on the knife plate, and it just uh, allows for the curvature uh, of the way the, the knife plate goes into the base. I certainly could have saved myself a little bit of time doing this if I had all the right tools uh, on hand, uh, and it just um, reinforces the need to keep more stuff in my truck, uh, which is fine. Uh, so now we have a good fit uh, on the knife plate, uh, and I'm gonna do some measurements for the peg holes. Um, I have a half inch uh, drill bit here that is good for wood or metal. Um, if I and I will have the opportunity to do it again. And so the next time I go to town, uh, what I'll do is I'm going to get a, a 10 inch auger bit. Um, having the six inch uh, drill bit means that I have to drill three separate holes uh, on each side uh, heading into the knife plate because the drill bit won't penetrate the entire timber. Uh, and if you measure correctly and drill straight, that's not a big deal. But uh, as most of you may know, um, it's, it's a little bit difficult uh, to guarantee um, sort of quality control at that point. Um, 
here what I was going to do was just mark the plates uh, and then uh, remove them and, and drill them out separately. Um, but quite frankly, I had this uh, plate screwed into the post and it was really stable. Uh, and I just decided to drill the holes uh, with it right there. And as you see, uh, the pegs move in nicely. They had a good snug fit. And that's what it'll look like when we raise it. Uh, now just to the top of the post. So uh, I went to pretty elaborate measures to ensure that I was only going to have to cut this post one time and that it was going to be perfect. Uh, and I'm going to talk about that uh, in probably the next video. Um, but I did uh, settle on the exact measurement. I was very confident with it um, and, and just made my cut similar to, similar to the you know other end. I'm just going to go around the entire four sides with a skill saw now that I know it's perpendicular. and um, I uh, just chop it off and, and flatten it up a, a little bit. Uh, I, I really didn't want to get this timber up and in place and then find out that I need to shorten it by a quarter inch or that it's it's just a little too tall, uh, a little too short, uh, and I need to you know shim it up. I, want, I wanted it to be uh, perfect. Um, unlike the bottom of the post, which I wanted to be a bit concave, this I want to be as uh, flat and square as possible um, so that uh, all of the carrying beams fit on it uh, appropriately. Uh, and you know, bear the weight evenly uh, across the top of the post. Uh, here I'm just uh, chiseling off some of uh, the bark. Uh, this is a smaller tree and this eight by eight ended up catching a little bit of the sap wood and just a corner bit of the bark. So I'm just gonna chisel this off. This post is gonna be hidden uh, in a wall, so I'm not terribly concerned about what it looks like. And uh, it also gives me the opportunity to sort of practice this process on posts that um, I know aren't, aren't gonna be seen by anybody other than uh, me. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's in place now. The pins are in. Uh, I didn't show the, um, you know, screwing the plate into the concrete, but that's a pretty simple process. So I'll just do this again for, uh, one more post in this section of the house, and then we'll be ready to lay the subfloor. Well, that's all for now. Uh, see you next time. Uh, thanks a lot.